It's our hour for us to begin communion. May we stand all over the room. It's good to be in the Lord's house. It's good to be alive today. It's good to be in our right mind. Before we do anything, why don't we take a minute and just go around and greet somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them today. Glad to be in God's house. Good to see you, John. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Make somebody feel welcome in the house of God. It's just good to be able to have church and be in church and to greet our worshipers online who are sharing with us in communion online today. What a God we serve, what a mighty Christ we serve, who does all things but fail. God is so good to us. Good to see you, Marion. God is so good to us. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. By faith, I received my sight. And right now, I am happy all the day. Oh, at the cross.
for me when you see me on my knees you know sometimes you know you need to pray ain't nobody got to tell you nobody has to send you a message you know it's praying time things are happening your world is so up in the air you know it's praying time God if you don't help me I won't get through this singer said when you see me on my knees you know that it's one of them seasons that I really need you God dear Lord come here Jesus Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. On me. Minister Courtney Mims, won't you come and lead us in prayer? When you see me on my knees, dear Lord, come come to say thank you Lord we thank you for allowing us to make it back to church one more time Lord we thank you for your grace and mercy that walks with us day by day Lord we thank you for 10 months that we've made it through the year and Lord now we ask that you would bless this service allow our minds and hearts to focus on you allow everything that is in our midst that's not like you to just vacate in this moment Lord God Give us peace, Lord. We need peace in the land and peace in our lives. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. You are so, so good. You are so, so good. And Lord, we pray you would bless the message that it would touch us in a way that we know we can't die here. We must keep going and we have more work to do. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Say it quiet. Amen. Oh.
need somebody. Don't don't sit down yet. Can we have some old school Sunday morning church? Come on, can we have some old school Sunday morning church? Can somebody just put your hands together and give God the best praise that you have? Anybody grateful for the blood on today? Come on, anybody grateful for the blood? Hallelujah. I'm still here because of the blood. Come on, anybody glad about it today? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on.
I'm uh, anybody happy you saved by his power divine saved turn to your neighbor and say I'm glad I'm saved amen 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 just want to bring a few brief announcements make sure today somebody say today today is the last day again the last day to register for our first year discipleship classes last day to register for our connection group classes they start this week so you want to make sure you register today turn to your neighbor and say today 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 also remember this wednesday is our noonday service come on let's give god praise for our noonday service amen and also with our noonday service we have our produce on the plaza so make sure you bring your bags we're going to have some fresh produce from the farm make sure you're here for our wednesday noonday service you can park on parking lot C because a lot of folks after they get all that produce, they don't want to have to go all the way over to parking lot E. So make sure you park right on parking lot C for our produce on the plaza. And remember this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. You can make sure you get information about breast cancer awareness both in the lobby as well as over by our cancer support ministry, uh, over by our health suite. So you can get information about cancer support. And on the 29th of this month, all of our caregivers and all of our cancer survivors will be sitting in service. They are building their community right here at New Psalmist Baptist Church so that they can help each other as they go through financial, physical, mental challenges. It's good to have a community with you. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for our cancer support ministry here. And make sure you mark your calendars. October 28th, Saturday, October 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. is going to be our Harvest Fest. That's for all of our MP kids, all of our up next youth. We're going to have a great time in a safe environment for our kids. We're going to have game trucks, moon bounces, a teen DJ. We're going to have our trunk or treat, costume parade, and even pumpkin painting. It's going to be a great time in the Lord right here at New Psalmist Baptist Church. You can go to church center to register. There's no cost, but we want you to make sure that we have enough for everybody. So we need you to register right on our church center app. Uh, newpsalmist.churchcenter.com look for the Harvest Fest registration we just thank God for everything that's going on remember this is our clergy appreciation month and we want to celebrate the best pastor on planet earth come on let's give God praise for our bishop on the last Sunday of this month we'll be celebrating our bishop for clergy appreciation month and come on new psalmist let's just thank God as he comes up for our pastor the man who is the angel of this house who's been serving for the last 48 years Come on, let's give God praise for our pastor, Bishop Walter Scott Thomas, Sr. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to see everybody out tonight, well, this afternoon, and those who are gathered in their homes and other places. Jesus, keep me near the cross. You know, whenever we gather for communion, some of us go way back in memory to when we remember going to communion years and years ago. Sunday morning, we lift so many praise songs of the Karen. But I remember songs like, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Somebody here knows where I'm coming from. I need you to stand with me. Come on, everybody. Let's just stand on communion night. We're going to lift this old hymn in your homes. I need you to perk up. Prepare to sing. This is communion. This is communion. Families are gathered together. We're in the building. Others will be sharing communion later even tonight. But we're praising him right now because he's all that and some. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Let's say it together, church. Come on. Jesus, keep me.
when you think about or just moaning quiet. Mm. Think about how good God is to us. I remember when we had upright pianos, an upright piano, little organ. But look where God has brought us. Some of you know he's brought you a long way and through a lot. And he's never failed you yet. Oh, we can't help but praise a God like this. I need you to sing that chorus this time and belt it out. In the cross. Oh, yes. God we serve. I remember rushing from wherever we were to get back for communion, to get back to the communion service, to be a part of, will the Lord remember me when I am called to go? When I have crossed the chilly sea, will he his love there show? Oh yes! He heard my fiendish cry from to set me free. I know that I'm included and he will remember me. Somebody here is on my street. Oh, yes, he will remember me. Somebody here remembers those days. Will the Lord remember me when I am called to go? He'll always be there every time we need him. Rushing back to church to hear songs like Wounded for Me. Wounded for Me. Oh. All because Jesus was wounded for me. Somebody hears a witness. He was wounded for me. Just play it for me, JD. Wounded for me. I can still hear Dorothy Dixon playing those keys in a noonday service. And my mother in law, Bertha Lyle, singing it. There on a cross, 
He was wounded for me. Hmm. God, my transgressions, and now I can, I am free all because Jesus was wounded, was well, wounded for me. Then they say he dying. Play it, Brother Austin. Dying. Dying. For me. There. On that cross. He was dying. Dying for me. God. My transgression. And now I am free. All because Jesus was dying. Then that last verse would ring out. We'd sit in communion and I'd hear him say, Come in. It's coming for me. Oh, one day. Anybody believe the Lord is coming for you one day? Oh, come on, y'all don't act like it. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, He is coming. Coming for me. God, my transgression, and now I, I'm free. All because Jesus is coming for me. Oh, my God. Remember me, remember me. We sang in communion services. We witnessed in communion services just how good the Lord has been. I need you to turn to the person beside you and just share one of your testimonies about how good God has been to you. Won't you just turn to the person beside you, just share one. Oh, that's it. And until you die. Oh, yes. He heard my fatal cry. From bondage set me free. And when I reach the pearly gates, he will. Remember me, oh yes. Somebody here remembers that. When I am called to go, when I have crossed those chilly seas, will he his love pass show? Oh yes, say it quiet. He heard my people cry. Did set me free. And when I reach the pearly gates, he will remember me. Somebody here remembers. When I am called to go, when I when I am called to go, oh, when
my God, my God, he will remember me. We're getting ready to give out gifts of love. And as we do, keep in mind that first week in November, 7th and 8th of November, we are going to have ex an experience with God. I, I've been talking about it. I've been believing God for it. We'll be preaching on it, leading up to it, starting the fifth Sunday, fifth Sunday, first Sunday, then into experiencing God and then preaching about it afterward. Our worship services are going to be impactful. How many of you know some people that are going through? Bring them to church with you. Tell them if they don't come to church, don't call you. Don't call you and cry in their soup. Come to church with you and let God lift their burden. Because there's something about an experience with God that will change your life. Somebody here is a witness. We're making it because we know him. We're getting ready to give now as God has blessed us. We give electronically. We give in the basket. I'm going to ask us all to stand. You can give through Givelify or Pushpay. You can give through the New Psalmist website. On the line, Mark Communion, we give out gifts tonight. We give out communion gifts. We are the Lord's disciples who gather with him to celebrate his last meal. So we come tonight to share, to celebrate. Won't you bow your heads? Father, we give out gifts now for the upbuilding of your kingdom. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our voices in praise to you as the God of our salvation. Accept our gifts that we give now for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Come ushers, receive the gifts of the people of God. Praise his name. Our choir is going to prepare us for the word tonight. Oh, yes. Listen, the Ravens went all the way to London to win. Let's pray they can bring a win back to America. Amen. Amen. Sing for us. Praise. Sing, darling. made of stone or in a shanty all alone God cares God
I want you to open your Bibles. Two passages I want to read. One is the 14th chapter of Mark's Gospel. 14th chapter of Mark's Gospel, verse 22. Then I want you to skip over to Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, beginning with verse 13. Verse 13. Mark's Gospel, chapter 22, or chapter 14, verse 22. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. To contextualize it, come over to chapter 22 of Luke beginning with verse 13 and 14. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, "This, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again of the fruit of this vine until the kingdom of God has come. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may go to your seats. There are so many expectations we have of God, of, of our Christ, and of our church. So many expectations that we think just leap from the pages of scripture and are backed up and should be backed up by the behaviors of men and women. But sometimes we have to look seriously at the context of what Jesus did and said to sometimes understand what he expects even now. One of the most powerful passages of scripture is the last evening of the master's life. The last week we call Passion Week was filled with many unique experiences as Jesus sought to teach those who would be left behind. He knew that death was soon coming. But that last night, that last night was something special. The master had come to Jerusalem with crowds and throngs following him. He had come with them singing, Hosanna, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They broke down palm branches, strewn them in the street. The Pharisees cried out, tell them to shut up. And Jesus said, if they hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. We get the, Im we get the image of a marvelous, a marvelous procession coming from the top of the Mount of Bethany all the way down to the, city, to the city of Jerusalem, where Jesus enters, turns over the money changers, tables in the temple. We get the impression of crowds of thousands, of hundreds at least, that have jammed the city and are now seeing the Messiah for the first time, seeing him ride to town and wondering if he will restore the kingdom at this hour. Their Messiah, their leader has come riding on the back of a donkey. And there are hundreds, children, grown folk, men and women from every tribe and nation. 
that have come out to be a witness to the marvelous ride of the master. We call that day Palm Sunday. But then there is that Friday afternoon. The master has told his disciples to go prepare an upper room to prepare an upper room and get ready to share with him that last meal that shall be theirs. What's interesting about this, and, and, and I marveled at it when I, I read it, I, because it stopped me after all these years of reading this. Nudge somebody and say, here's a real truth. The first communion service of the man who fed 5,000 with two fish, five barley loaves, who walked on water, who said, peace be still, who opened blinded eyes and unstopped deaf ears, who, who, who was there to raise the widow of Nain's son, Jairus' daughter, and Lazarus from the dead, who had crowds following him in the thousand, who fed 5,000, fed 4,000. The first communion service, was just a handful of folk. Y'all ain't got it. You know, I know you like me sometimes marvel, how come people don't come back like they should? Where, where are all the saints who gather for the feeding of the 5,000? Where are all the saints who come for the walk on water? But the reality of scripture is that the Lord instituted the communion service for those who would understand the work that would be committed unto them. Let somebody say, getting deep now. Getting deep. I, I, I couldn't understand until I, I started reading and thinking. Jesus said, I have desired to have this meal with you. I, I, I want you to get the room. So where, where are the crowds? Where, where are all those healed, delivered, set free? Demons cast out of them. Where, where are they? Where, where is the large numbering of persons who have been miraculously delivered from demons and devils? They are not there. And what blew my mind, it does not seem to phase the master. Because those in attendance, let somebody say, get this. Those in attendance are the ones he's expecting. Oh, y'all missed that. If you got it, you shout right now. He says, did you hear what the word said? See, Mark's gospel just lays it out. He, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it around. He took the cup, cast in, he passed it around. But you got to go to Luke because Luke's gospel is the gospel of the Son of Man. He is, it is the gospel of the man who is like us, who is the son of God, but also the son of man, who knows what to expect and what to do. The Bible says, they have come to Jerusalem, an entourage has followed him on Palm Sunday. During the week, he's been in the temple teaching. Crowds have been everywhere to hear him. But when it comes time to share what we know as the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion, the Holy Eucharist, Jesus says, I desire to share this with you. I've desired to share it with those who understand who I am and what I'm doing in their lives. Help me somebody. I, 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 I've saved this moment. This moment of edification is different than the moment of education. This moment I'm building you up. This is not the moment I'm trying to teach you all the great truths. And some people are ready for education. Some folk are ready for edification. I, I just need to ask, is there anybody here who's ready to have a second story built on your house? Is there anybody here ready to go higher? 
Is there anybody here who's not just worried about what you know, but it's about who you can become? God, I wish I had five witnesses in here who could declare I'm ready for the next level. I I'm ready for God to build the second story on my soul. I I'm ready for God to build some higher up. I'm ready for God to take me higher. See, the word education deals with giving you knowledge you don't have. Edification deals with taking you where you have been. And Jesus says, I desire to have this moment with you. I need some choir members to touch somebody and say, I'm glad our choir sang it. I, I need officers to touch each other and say, I'm glad our team served. I, I need members to touch each other and say, I'm glad we were called to come. Because guess what? Every one of us had an option. Amen, light. Every one of us had an option to not be here. But something said to us, I need to be there tonight. Or if I'm on Main Street, and every now and then you ought to thank God for the something that speaks to you. Because wherever God is telling you to be, he's planned something to happen that's going to help you move from who you be to who you become. Am I on Main Street? Whenever God speaks to you and says, I want you to go here, I want you to go there, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, it's because he plans to take you from one level to the next level. There's nothing like shouting over what God has done in your life. It's one thing to have God, I said to the women yesterday, to have God help you succeed at what you're doing, but it's something else when you can say, if it hadn't been for God I never would have been able to do that but God gave me the drive the will the strength the volition God gave me everything I needed to be able to accomplish it and somebody ought to just thank him thank you Lord for putting you on my mind so that I know where to be today can I get five people who are just glad God does still talk to you It blew my mind, Tricia, when I read that passage. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. I, 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 want, I want to be with folk who are going to appreciate mystery. Now, you may not think I said anything. But baby, I just said probably one of the greatest lines I've ever said since being pastor. God wants people who appreciate mystery. Who walk in smoke and fog. Saying, I don't know how we're going to do this, how we're going to handle this. But somehow, God's going to make a way out of no way. I don't know what's coming next. I don't know when it's coming. Have you ever just awakened and felt something wasn't right? Something's about to happen. Some, I wish I had some people here who had what my mama called intuition. We used to call it mother wit. You had a sense of feeling that something is coming. And God says, I'm trying to deal with folk who live in that land of mystery where you just sense something. You say to somebody, you know, I just feel a little off. I just feel like something's going to happen. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what it's going to be, but I just got to. Am I on anybody's street here? I need the folk who've been there to wave at me. God says, y'all belong to me. Y'all are the people who walk in mystery. Mystery that doesn't make you collapse, but mystery that makes you call on the name of the Lord. See, some folk collapse when things look bad, but saints know, though, this is the mystery God talks about. I need him to hold my hand. I need him to guide my feet. I need him to watch over me. And I stopped in here to tell you, God has something planned for your life if you are a part of the crowd that gets caught up in mystery. Nudge somebody beside you and ask them, do you know about mystery? Walking in mystery. I have desired 
to eat this with you all because for three years you all have hung with me in mystery. You got on a boat one day and it rocked. Almost scared y'all to death. And you saw me stand up. You were at the grave when Lazarus came. Bouncing out. I told y'all to go collect the fragments of food. And all we had was two fish. Two lake trout fried. And five little Parker House rolls. And each one of y'all came back with a tray filled with food. Child, when you deal with God, you live in mystery. You live in the land of, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. And if it happened once, it can happen again. I don't know how these bills are getting paid, but they're getting paid. I do not know how I'm able to do what I'm doing, but I'm getting it done. I don't know how I started the month with all of these obligations, and they have all been met by the end of the month. But I'm walking back with my bowl with all of these pieces from two fish. Jesus said, I've desired to eat this with you. Because you are the people who live in mystery. I look at New Psalmist Church and what we've been able to do over all these years. Mystery. Mystery. I can still see us going down to First and Franklin Presbyterian Church to buy 100 West Franklin Street for $215,000. And we sit down there with the lawyer. Oh, God, I wish I had some. We're sitting down there. With, I'm 28 years of age. We about to buy this building. It's $250,000. That don't sound like much right now. But in 1977, that was a whole lot of money. That was more zeros than any of us had ever seen. I'm sitting there, and the lawyer says, they say, well, what's your offer? And the lawyer says, we offer you about... Um, Oh, they, they wanted 200. We offer you about $200,000. And the man went, what? That's an insult. Y'all come in here. It's all of us African-Americans sitting at the table. Our lawyer sitting there. Jewish fellow sitting there. We just sitting there. And they, they going off about how y'all can offer that kind of money. We thought y'all would come in here with some kind of decent offer. The building's on the market for 250 and you all offer something like that. The little lawyer said, I'm sitting there going, oh, we're not going to get it. We're going to lose it. It's all gone. We sitting there. The mystery is floating all around us. The little lawyer sitting there hunched over, looking all old and everything. And they said, oh, he said, well, how much did y'all think we were going to offer? Man said, at least 215000 He said, you got a deal. It's okay. We sign right now. We sign right now. And, and that's how we got downtown. Mystery. God says, I got you living in mystery. We had a gas and electric bill that was bigger than the mortgage. We paid the building off in three years. Mystery. Mystery. God says, Jesus says, I have desired to eat this meal. This meal. I, I desire to have a communion table with people who are living with the mystery. Some of y'all are wondering, how you going to take care of relatives? How you, how you going to handle sicknesses? How you going to handle death? God said, Jesus said, I want to have this table with you because you are the ones living in mystery. You don't know how things are going to work out, but you trust me that I'm here with you. And you're not leaving because you have not found another source of mystery to match what I do in your life. Nudge somebody and tell them, you don't know what I'm living through. It's a mystery even to me how I got up this morning in my right mind, how I'm still able. Have any of you actually added up 
all of the subtractions from your life, you ought to have a deficit in your space right now. But the God of all gods who honors mystery is blessing your life and making your cup run over so that you can do fully, brilliantly, and completely everything that is laid in front of you. You should have been a casualty by now, but you are living in mystery. Every Sunday you keep coming back. These are the guys who were with him all the time. And all the rest of Jesus' crowds were temporary. But these guys, these ladies, they were there. Nudge somebody say all the time. In fact, let me show you what I mean. Nudge the person beside you and say, didn't I see you this morning? Didn't I see you this morning? Because we're the crowd that gets caught up in mystery. That, that, that's how they survived. For three years, they abandoned everything and went with him. And he broke bread while they were all gay. He said, I've desired to have this meal with you before I suffer. I wanted to sit down with the folk who are baptized in mystery who've been walking in mystery so long it blows their mind. Child, sometimes you just got to look at where you come from. If I've got five people in here who can look back at hills and valleys and know that when you could not walk, he picked you up and carried you to your next destination, I need somebody who's just happy today that you did not have to walk in some of those situations, but God picked you up and carried you because you are attached to mystery. And he broke the bread and he handed it to them, passed it out among them, said, this is my body given for you. And then here comes the line, do this in remembrance of me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the part that blew my mind. Normally, you would, you would think everybody understood what was going on. Jesus said, no, do this. Eat this bread and do it remembering me. Wait a minute. Do this in remembrance of me. As if I'm telling you to, something to keep on doing. And you're going to really be doing it after I'm gone. In remembrance. I don't need to do it in remembrance if you are here. So if you're telling me to do it in remembrance, it is an alert to me that there's going to come a moment when I'm not going to be here but you are to do this anyhow because when you do it, you will remember me. When you have these moments, now get what I'm going to say. When you are, when mystery people come together, come together out of the situations in which they are living and struggling. And anybody in this room who ain't struggling, please write something that you can send to us, that we can publish to the congregation so that every person who's struggling can find out how not to struggle. Cause can I see the hands of the folk who have at least one struggle on your plate? He says to the mystery people who are struggling, do this in remembrance of me. Come together, all of you who live in the mystery, of how you made it through everything, how you get through it, what you've seen, what you've experienced, what you've come out of. I was looking, thinking the other day, I've had major surgeries and I'm still standing. Y'all ain't feeling me. I've got stitches or, or marks that go from here all the way around to my back and I'm still standing. I got some ribs that are held together by metal and I'm still 
understand. And Jesus said, you got to understand the mystery in which you operate. You came from the ghetto in the hood and look where you are now. You came from, as, as the songwriter said, you came from the bottom to the top. And look at who brought you every step of the way. He says, when you gather, when the mystery crowd gathers, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Break the bread and drink the cup in remembrance of me. Because what you will remember is that you are a part of a big community. Now look, we got 4,000 seats. We ain't filling them now. We don't need to. Because everybody ain't caught up in the mystery. You know, some folk wake up in the morning like this. Oh God, what am I going to do? How am I going to make it? No, I got to do this, this, this. I don't even, oh God, this is it's so much on my plate. How you feeling? I'm all right. What's the matter? Everything. What happened? Oh, I don't even want to talk about it. And it's not even, they have been up 10 minutes. Jesus said, but you're the crowd that live in the mystery. Oh, God, it's tough. I don't know what the world we're going to do today, but somehow I know you're going to make a way out of no way. I know you're going to fix it. So you're gonna... How many of you have had that prayer for your children? God, I know you're going to make a way out of no way. I know you're going to fix it. How many of you had that prayer for a loved one in your family? God, I know you're going to work with them some kind of way. You're going to work things out. You're going to take care of it. How many of you had that prayer for yourself? God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this, but somehow I'm going to put my hand in your hand. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and I trust you. I don't care what happened. I'm going to trust you. Even if it looks crazy, I'm going to trust you. Jesus said, I need you to understand you are not trusting him by yourself. When you gather together, you will remember that I did not come just for one. I came to give salvation to everybody. And those who walk in mystery will understand. Let me help you. What salvation really is salvation is the gift of fellowship it is the gift of community it is the gift of canceling out all of my sin it is the gift of a connection with my heavenly father Jesus said and when you come together and break that bread and sit among other folk with mystery you realize you have a family that will be by your side that is fighting the same fight using the same power and coming out victorious God I wish I had somebody here who understands that when you come to communion you you realize you ain't in this thing by yourself and you're not the only one who believes in the power of God let me let me wrap this up he says he says I have I've desired to do this and I need you to do this break this bread in remembrance of me because when you do you will realize that the people who walk in mystery are a community there's a whole lot of church people in this world but not everybody is in the close knit community of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ can I see the hands of folk who in this room who know you would not have made it through the stuff you made it through if God hadn't stepped in when he did now here's the acid test and you don't mind giving him the credit for it you don't mind saying, oh, baby, I couldn't have done that by myself. No, the Lord made a way out of nowhere. I wish I had somebody who knows that you don't mind. You don't have to tell for, well, you know, I had help. I had people that helped me with this. I had folk who did. The no, baby, the Lord came by to see about me. God kept me in my right mind. God raised up friends for me. God opened doors for me. Every time I take communion, I realize that God gets the credit for the community and the mystery that I live in. I realize if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I'd have lost my mind on the first surgery. I'd have died when they told me they had to take part of my lungs out. I'd have lost my mind when they cut my vocal cords but I live in the mystery I live with the God who says I'll make a way out of no way wait a minute I'm almost done Jesus says do this in remembrance of me 
Wait a minute, he's getting ready to die in a few hours. This is the part you got to get. And, and that's why communion is really for those who live in and appreciate the mystery. You know, we want everybody to come break the bread and drink the cup. And then you'll get people talking about, I ain't get mine. Is this grape juice or wine? Sometimes at my house during COVID, we had cranberry juice. We had apple juice. One day I, we were, I was on doing the service and I said, we took the bread and broke it and I had a roll, a hubby, big roll broken, took a bite and almost choked to death. <laughs> almost choked on the TV screen. My wife was handing me a cup underneath so that I could get that thing down. It ain't about the bread and the wine. He said, no, do this to remember your connection to power. That whatever you need, it'll be supplied. That you are a part of the community that followed the man who walked on water. And this is the part I like. And if you need to walk, I'll give you what you need so you can walk across water. Because some of y'all know you have walked some water in your life. But this is it. He says, do this in remembrance of me. And this is it. That I'm gonna sit. Then we're going to the table. I need the musician just to play softly. We come into the table. He says, listen, do this in remembrance of me. What, what do you mean, Jesus? You see, I'm getting ready to die. You don't fully comprehend what's going to happen. But you see them erecting crosses out there. They're setting up crosses out on that hill. I'm going to be on one of them. And there are going to be some moments in your space when you're going to be near scared to death. Can I see the hands of folk who know about moments of being scared? Oh, come on, raise them up high. How am I going to make it? How am I going to do? He said, but I want you to gather like this a people of mystery who are ready to go to the next level, who are sitting among other folk in the same site. And I want you to remember that instead of falling apart in this hour, now get this, asking all of y'all to pray for me. Jesus is getting ready to die, but instead of asking all of y'all, pray for me. Pray that I get through this. I'm standing here in a sense of peace, knowing that my heavenly Father watches over me. And no matter what comes, oh, this is the part I like, God will take, I used to say take care, but I think they left a word out in that song. God will take good care of me. I've been pastor 48 years and I've been watching God take good care of folk in situations that should have broken them down. Jesus said, when you take this bread, remember me. God will with nails in his hand, God will. Crown of thorns on his head, God will. And he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he gave up the ghost on that cross. But early, y'all didn't hear me, early, Sunday morning, I said early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Look at somebody and tell him, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. Nothing's going to keep me down. Because I do this. I do this. In remembrance. I don't fall apart. Because I come to this table. I don't collapse. Because I've got others. Who live in mystery with me. My head may be down, 
But deep in my heart, I know he will take good care of me. Do I have anybody in here who it blows your mind that God is still taking good care? We're coming, we're coming to this table. No, it's not really for just everybody and anybody. It, it's for those who are determined to walk with Jesus in the mystery. I've learned life is not a problem to solve. It's a mystery to experience. God doesn't have to solve my problems, but I do have to experience his mystery. And he will take. If there's anybody in here who's aware he'll take good care of you, then I need you to wave your hand like you about to lose it. Jesus says to you, Jesus says to you, I have desired to eat this meal with you because you know, you understand, you've been living with me in the mystery. And I want you to see the last thing I'm going to do I'm living in a state of peace. And I'm going to the garden to pray to my daddy. And he's going to give me the strength for everything I got to face. And when you get to this point, you do the same thing. You remember me. Oh, there may be one tonight who wants to be a part of his family. This is his table. I still see us racing down those streets, riding through the backwoods, trying to get down to Fremont Avenue and Landville Street so we could make it to communion to see the officers dressed in a certain attire, the preachers all dressed, to see the table all set and to know that we were a part of the mystery. We lived in the mystery. you take communion tonight remember that you are a part of others who are living in the mystery just like you sometimes we don't have a clue but we know he's there right with us when you take communion today remember this Jesus said, remember, do this in remembrance of me. I stood at the toughest test and I had peace because I knew I wasn't there by myself. My heavenly father watches over me. Won't you bow your heads and humble your hearts as Reverend Jeff White leads us in prayer. Bless your name and we give you glory, we give you honor and we give you praise. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for your body and your shed blood, God. For we realize, God, it gave us an option, God, and we give you glory for the option. Now, God, cause us to remember this, God. Cause us to let it guide our spirits, God. Even now, God, we thank you for it and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, my God.
that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power the blood that Jesus for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from death It reaches. Reaches to the highest Oh, thank you, Jesus. One more time. Jesus said to all of us I have desired to eat this with you before I suffer and he took the bread and he broke it and he passed it around and he looked at them and he said, eat this. This is my body. It's broken for you. It's broken for you. Everything I'm going through, I'm going through for you. That you might be the community of people who live in the mystery of God. Eat it and do this in remembrance of me. We do as they did. And then he took the cup. Representing his blood that would be shed not falling apart though the heaviness of it weighed upon him 
It's something when you can go through and keep on going. God, I'm talking to somebody here. When you know the weight is heavy, but yet you keep on keeping on. Nudge somebody close to you and say, that's where I am. Now look back at him and tell him, and that's where Jesus is. And he took the cup. He passed it around for them to share so that this new community could share in his suffering and be made strong. Do this in remembrance of him. We do as they did. Paul said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth his death until he comes again. And new psalmist, have no doubt about it. He's coming back again. Oh, yes, he is. He's coming. The ushers are coming to collect your cups. He's coming. Coming back. We're getting ready to go on our way. It reaches. Say reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And the glory to the Lord. No one is Um, good to see you in church, Carly. Today, oh, it will never. Say it, church. Thank you, committee, women's committee. Say it, choir. Thank you, officers. his countenance round about you and the Lord give you peace. See you Thursday night in Bible study. Tuesday night on our prayer call. Shake somebody's hand.